guys. We know what it is. It's Sunday fun day. Don't have a lot of time out here today. Maybe four or five hours. We've got the heavy rains back again. I got to keep a close watch on my house. My sump pumps is running like a son of a bitch. But, but I got to ask you guys, where the hell were you on Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday, we worked on the Model A and you weren't there. I did a little work on the Model A on Friday. You weren't involved, but it's nothing you're going to be upset that you missed. But let me show you what happened. So, I, if you remember in the last video, finished off where the dash was all welded across the top. But I had to make this corner finish welding it. Well, I did. And not only that, we did the bodywork on it, a rough end of the bodywork. The dash is done up in this area for welding. I left the bottom because I don't know where I'm going yet, but let's take a close look at this. Let's get around here. Now it's just sort of hanging in place. I've got the bolts in it, but they're not super tight, but there we go. I tried to keep, if you can see, I put it on the original cross rail, right? It goes on the Model A. If you can see right there, I tried to keep the curvature the same on either side. So that's the only real part you see left of that Model A part. Come around here. All right. If you remember, I had to weld a little piece in here. I've got it welded in. The dash is bolted on this corner in the far corner and is bolted through the center using the original existing holes that were for the Model A. So that is what's happening. So today's going to be kind of a fun day. Um, you're not going to see a lot of progress maybe today. What I want to do today is I want to grab the uh, steering box and column and put it in the car because if you remember I was using this column tube pipe. But I had a rough idea and a rough measurement where it was coming up through. But I want to grab the actual column and, uh, and the wheel and mount it in place to make sure before, let me get in here, before I start getting carried away playing here and worth what I'm going to do, I got to make sure this is right because it would suck to do all this and then this is wrong. But if everything goes good, it should be pretty damn close. Um, you know, somebody mentioned it on my video, they wrote in and said, I think you can go to Shoebox Central and buy this new glass piece. And you can, I knew you could, but I just didn't want to get too, too carried away with it. But the more I thought about it, and I can't remember who you are that wrote in, but I ended up doing it. I went to Shoebox Central and I bought the new lens. I bought the new lens. Now, don't any of you tell me I need to rechrome this, because that ain't happening. We got to cut the dollar somewhere here. This is just a fun ride. So the plan is I'm going to put my headlight switch over here, obviously. Headlights, boom. You know, or I could go headlights, boom. Could tuck it under here. And that way there you just see a little knob and this would be clear. I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm going to do whatever I want. Ignition I for sure want here. You wait till you see what I got coming for here. This is really cool. And now what I've gone and done is I've dug, I dug out the old dash I took out. There's the original dash. I'm going to yard these gauges out here, these Stuart Warner gauges, not this one, I don't need that, but I need my oil, my temp, and that kind of shit, right? Um, and I'm going to see how they look. I'm going to see how they look coming up and across here. I'm not going to put them in place. I'm going to draw the circles where they should go and get a feel for it before I start cutting stuff up. All right, I got my glove box. I got my glove box. It's not exactly lined up. I got to line up a little better. I started cutting the gas tank out too. Still got to cut more of the gas tank away, but see that? Someone had mentioned it's going to be a short glove box. No, no, you cut the gas tank out. I've got the original glove box liner going in here. I ordered a brand new one of those too. And they got a huge glove box. So I got a full on glove box in this car. Close is nice. I just got to line up a little better there. I got to, it's a little tight here. I'm going to put a shim under here to pull her down a bit and kind of level it out. Plus I haven't got the rubbers in behind here. There's rubbers that go in behind here to, that'll stop that from sitting in so far. But that's the least of my worries. So that's what we're doing today. But we're also doing is we're gonna, you know, we're gonna kind of figure out what we need, get the column in, and then if we get a chance, we might we might start playing with the engine here. I might start ripping the water pump and the pulleys off. Because remember I told you there's a piece made by um what's it called now? Zitz or something or Zoots or who knows, I can't remember. Anyway, that part arrived. It arrived, I got it here. Um, just out of the blue, there it was, there we go, came right out of Speedway, so we'll cut that open and we'll show you what that's all about. So, 
We'll be back here in a bit and we'll play and we'll see what's going on. For right now, what I want to do is get all the gauges taken out of here. I want to get everything taken out. Okay, so I, um, I got the column in here. It's hard to exactly see. It's lining up, it's, it's lining up with this no problem, but that's roughly where it's going to sit, as you can see roughly there. It's way too close. It's way too close to the gauges. So what I want to do is I need to drop it down. I'm not going to be running this wheel either. This is a 17-inch um, a wheel. I'm going to put a 14 or 15-inch wheel on there, probably 14. The car is already easy enough to steer, and you know it's nice to have the leg room. So I need to I need to put a I need to change the drop. This is your this is a steering column drop here. You can visualize it. There's another piece that goes around here, it goes around your column. I need to reposition the mounting of the of the drop. And I'm going to have to change a little bit just down below where the box where the box is mounting here slightly. I'm going to have to slightly change two of these holes here and the main shaft hole. So uh, I'm going to play with that right now and try and get that lined up. Just because, like I say, it's kind of hard for me to show you this because I took the drop off. I should have started the camera up before I took it off. But anyway, when I had the drop on, if I can get this camera far enough back, the wheel, you can see right there, look at the steering wheel to the... For the gauge, right? Now you can also get different wheels. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You can get different wheels, not just for the you know for the diameter across this way, for depth, how they go in. So some can poke down, which will bring the wheel out more. So you know I gotta look into that too, but I'm not there right now. But either way, this is not what I want. And this is an old 48 to 52 Ford steering column. So it's not like it's a tilt or I can change anything. So I am going to do a little bit of fabricating and moving a few things around. So as I was saying, when you start to change one thing and it's turning out good and you're so grateful and happy, like I am with the dash, it still opens up a can of worms in other spots. So remember that. Nothing's as easy as it looks to be. But that's why it's Sunday fun day. Okay, let me get going here. All right, so I got the box bolted on there. Got my wheels fairly centered. It's hard to tell, I can't stand back far enough here, but the wheels are centered, the box is in. It's looking good, it's got a nice angle. Nothing's really changed much there. All I really had to do was down on the on the upper bolts. I just had to, I just I slightly, I bet you not even an eighth of an inch, just just a little under eighth of an inch, I oblonged them a little bit in the frame just to get the box to tilt. The bottom one was fine. I just tilted those two slightly. And what that did was that brought my steering wheel, because the steering wheel was literally touching on the dash. It brought it away. Now, remember, I'm not, um, excuse me. <laughs> Woo! Oh, boy, oh, boy. Remember, I'm not going to be um, running this wheel. So it definitely is better. If we can get in here now. Uh, there we go. So there's our wheel. But like I say, we don't we don't have much of a distance here. This is a 17 inch wheel. We're going to be putting a 14 inch wheel in here. So that's going to bring the wheel down to here. Then we're going to do a different offset. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to look around what I got going on outside right now because I keep a lot of old steering wheels and shit. And if I can just find something that gives me that idea of what I want to do here, we'll be okay. But I could, if you wanted to, you could use this wheel. I mean, look, the gauges are visible, everything's visible there. I mean, it's all fine, but I want to go smaller. Because sometimes if I drink too many beer, I get bloated. I may not fit behind that wheel. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so as you can see here, I was playing around. I moved, I took this, this is, an old, this is a connecting rod. It's a reprodu reproduced part that they make to make it look kind of cool for your car. Anyway, he had it as a steering column drop and he had it mounted further back here underneath here it actually works fine off my dash so as you can see this is why I did the bodywork across here but never did get involved in here didn't want to waste my time because you can see I had notched this out thinking a column for some reason I was thinking a column's coming through there because I was going by this dash originally how it already had this notched out but um, anyway I don't need to do that so I can fill this in so it's a good thing I can weld this close now which will give it a more smoother look here. So, but what I'm thinking, and I haven't got one on hand, but I can make one, but sometimes you do see them turn up. 
I can't remember who made them. It slips my mind right now. But there was old column drops that would go back in the day in the 50s and 60s. You'd mount your column to, and it had room to put gauges on it. I think somebody even reproduces them. I might make something as my column drop here and have my, instead of have my ignition right on the dash, I might put it here. I'm not sure. It might run something else over here on this side of it. Model A's are tight, so I'm trying to utilize any space I can get. But either way, I know for a fact we're going to be welding this in. We don't need this dip across here. And I really would like, I, I, I like this look, I don't mind it. I might take this and move it down further and just extend the bracket underneath for this. That way there I'll have two mounts holding my column here, plus the column itself bolted to the frame. Um, I'm always a guy where a little extra, a little overkill doesn't hurt, you know. So, um, but yeah, I'm kind of, uh, like I said, I'm getting the idea I want to put something here. I want to put, and I want to get this off of here, get rid of this bloody thing. That's where your old, that's where the old three-speed shifter would have went. That's got to be chopped off. But I do want to put something here. I'm going to put something here, like I say, it's going to come down like that. Maybe a gauge here, or no, I mean an ignition here. Maybe a ga another gauge over here for something. Or maybe some toggle switches for something. I'm not sure. Headlights are definitely going here. And, um, well, I'm going to show you a little something here. And take you guys, take you guys out to my secret compartment here. This is, I got shit everywhere. Not only do I have shit in the office, but... Anyway, I'm going to keep you occupied here, and I'm going to show you where I'm doing a lot of digging. And this is where, this is where uh, sometimes Sunday fun days, they slow down. You guys don't see as much getting done to the car, because I come out here to my special little room. da -da! Look at all the goodies. I'm going to try and go slow for you. Everything is labeled, boxed. All sorts of mirrors, 55 Chevy parts, 4951 Ford parts, 4951, 4951, look at, and if you look, look at all the trinkets. Like an example, 4950 Fords had these, oh, it's got some clips stuck in anyway, as a dome light with a little switch. Think about that. That could be two little lights on either side behind the corner windows in the Model A that you switch on. I'm not saying I'm doing that, I'm just saying. This is what I like about customizing. Just love it. 64 Chevy parts, like all sorts of stuff. Look at this, you guys have Mercs and shoeboxes. DeSoto grills. Headlight rings. You wouldn't believe. Trinkets everywhere. And I utilize everything. Look at all the gauges here. All right? All sorts of stuff. So, this is where I come when I'm looking for stuff and then I go back and forth and figure it out. So I'm gonna dig around in here and I got a couple ideas of something I wanna do at the dash and we'll see what happens. All right, so I went and I've cut my holes for my gauges, the dash, my Stuart Warner gauges. Now they're just sitting there. I don't have the clamps in behind them so they might, they might look like they're a little bit off. It's just because they're not, they're not mounted. They're just sitting there just like the Speedo. But do you notice what I dug out of my back shed? What is that hanging underneath the dash? Some may like it, some may not. That is an old accessory as an ashtray that you could mount under the dash. And I just thought that was so cool. Not that I'm a smoker, but I like the fact to have an ashtray because I throw shit in it. I just think that's so cool. Got to obviously clean it up a bit. I'm going to change the knob out on it. I already know what I'm running for knobs. I'm going to use the 4950 Ford. See how I mean they're just sitting there? Just sitting there. I'm going to use the 4950 Ford uh, car dash knobs that were the little round chrome knobs. So I'll use that for my headlight switch. I'll take this off, put one on there. Now don't pay attention to this because there is a piece of metal that goes in there. I've got it. Where is it? Oh, I got it. Well, here's a piece that's broken. From it, I gotta make a new piece. Which way does this fucking thing go now? This goes here. If you can visualize this, I can't even hold it and film at the same time. Anyway, this kind of goes in there. And that'll cover the holes up that you see here. And I'm gonna have this, I'm either gonna chrome this piece along here when I'm done with it, 
or I'm just going to paint it silver. We'll see. So the plan is the dash is going to be body color of the car, and then this is going to be the opposite color. I'm going this car dark, dark blue and Wimbledon white. Uh, the car is going to be solid blue, but I'm going to go the Ford Wimbledon white in here. There won't be a lot because the time I get this, I've got another plan for right here. I've got a plan for right here. That's the reason I kept the gauges up high. That won't be till the next Sunday fun day. Not that today's over yet. Um, I still got to cut this out for my ignition or for my headlight switch, but I haven't got the headlight switch yet. I've got some old ones here, but I just don't cut anything out till I have the exact part that I'm using. And like I say, I'm gonna have to pull all this apart. I gotta weld this up, and I want to make another drop that's gonna go around the column. I'm gonna have a double drop, one here and one further down that's hidden. But I want to put another one here. I've decided that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna run my ignition switch off the column here. And on this side, I might have to run my fuel gauge just because I don't know whether the fuel gauge in this cluster is going to work. Um, the Speedo works in here. I know that for a fact. No problem there. I could probably get, you could probably use these gauges if I wanted, not put these here, but I don't want to do that. I want the car to have that early 60s, late 50s race look. And this is kind of what, you know, people were going for them aftermarket gauges. People liked it to look like a cockpit of an airplane. They liked all the gauges, the toggle switches, that's what they were into. But I like mechanical gauges, I don't trust these gauges. I'm going to try my hardest to get this fuel gauge to work, but if it doesn't, I do have the original fuel gauge that was in this car when I got it, and I'll put it down here on this side. Because it'll be kind of hidden, because when the door is closed, you really don't see much on any car what's going on here. And then here, I'll put my ignition switch, which leaves this clean, except for what I'm going to do here. Anyway, let's get out, take another look. Ah. That is just looking so cool. I'm so happy with it today. You know, you'll have to give me, you'll have to tell me what you think of the ashtray. <laughs> Some of you are gonna be like, what the hell, man? But I just love it. Like I say, that's a custom accessory from back in the day. I got so much of this old custom accessory shit. It's unreal. I made sure I put it right down by the edge where the dash finishes off. And now some of you are going to be wondering, why is it humped up like that? That's how these dashes were. were. They finished off like that. That's all factory-like. So we'll close this up. I mean, that just looks beautiful. You just look it in the car. I mean, oh. And you know what I also like? Was my buddy Dan was over on Beer Friday, and he said, are you going to, I wouldn't tell him, he said, are you going to take pipe? because some people will pipe in the dash and recess the gauges in. I did think of that, but I didn't want to do it, and I'll tell you why. If you look very carefully, if you look at the edge and the lip of this factory 51 Ford Speedo, it's basically got the same edge and lip as the Stuart Warner gauges. It's kind of, it's just, everything is flowing. This is going to be the main part that I'm focused on on this car, because this has got to flow. What I'm going to do now, I just mentioned I'm going to paint this Wimbledon white. The whole plan for the car is the car is going to be dark, dark blue. The original 31 Ford dark blue, right? And not the Washington blue. There was one even darker. I can't even pronounce the name. I can't even pronounce it. It begins with A. And Henry Ford actually wrote on the paper, blue, black. It's that dark that unless the sun hits it, it looks blue. But literally, it looks black. I'm going to do the whole car that color with a gloss black frame. Then the firewall, which I ordered, I ordered a 32 Ford firewall, is going to be the Wimbledon white, which is a factory Ford color. So if you can picture that Wimbledon white there with the Wimbledon white, just that in the dash, that'll just set it off. And then I'll do the upholstery a shade up from the blue that's on the outside with, again, the creamy white and tuck and roll. But the upholstery won't be for a long time. That won't be for at least to the following year. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep playing around here a bit. We still got a little more time before I got to head in. The rain is just coming down out here. It is crazy. It's crazy. Um, man, there's people sandbagging their houses out here. Uh, they're flooding down the road. My sump pump is running like constantly right now just pumping water out but the good news is i ain't got no water in there yet last time we had this a week ago i i got some water in the basement but i got rid of it really quick i was lucky 
I got some good neighbors, they gave me a hand, we flushed her out right away. Didn't really do any damage, just screwed up some baseboards and, well, kind of got wet under my hot water tank and took it out, but that's okay. The hot water tank was 16 years old and now I got a new one and it's bigger. So there we go, but let's keep playing with the car. All right, I did a little more looking around and I got one more little piece I added. Now it's just sitting here. It's off an Oldsmobile. How good does that look? It looks like it was meant to be there. V8 on the glove box. Now I had, now this is like a, a brass copper and I would like that. The one little piece to set everything off from the chrome. Now it's just sitting here. It fits perfectly to the contour of this glove box door. I kept it down low. So I just, like I say, it's just, it's just sitting there, right? What you do in here is you put your, um, Oh, something just fell. You just put your studs in your studs go into um, oh God, I forget the name of the things you put in here. But anyway, and that will just push in. Let's stay there. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm loving everything. So this piece here that I'm putting here, I haven't got yet. It's on the way to me. So until I can get that, I can't let you see it finished. And of course, you know I never tell you what I'm going to do. I wait till it's done. But that's it. I think that looks absolutely marvelous. I just got, I just got to get that in there. And now I'm going to start welding that up. And I'm going to make my drop piece that I'm going to put around there by my column. And then I'm going to put, like I say, my ignition there, my fuel gauge. I'm waiting on my headlight switch. I'm waiting on my ignition switch. And uh, then I'm good to go. My next step is going to be digging through my parts and finding a really cool rear view mirror that's going to work to go up there where the factory one was that's going to work for what I need. So I've got a lot of different rear view mirrors from back in the day. But with that being said, let's open this package up. I'm going to show you guys what this water pump thing looks like. Now I don't know where I can put this camera to do this. Okay, this filming's going to suck right now. Or I'll tell you what. Let me set this camera down. Let me get this sucker open, and then I'll turn you back on. Okay, I was telling you guys it was called Zits or something. Fuck, I must have been thinking back in high school. Anyway, it's called Zips Water Pump Riser. And it uses a six-cylinder short water pump. Not a cheap kit, as you can see. There it is right there, advertised. It is 279 bucks. Not cheap. But, $279, going to put my fan in the right spot on my rad and going to stop me from overheating on the side of the road. Hell yeah, I'm into that. So here's the water pump. Yeah, they give you a gasket. Your typical Chevy six-cylinder water pump. We've all seen these before. Here is this piece in here. Comes with some, comes with some brackets. Sorry for the filming, guys. It comes with a bunch of shit. Because this comes with a bracket where you can actually... Here it is. That's it. All that money for this. Let's throw this on the floor like everything else I do. Okay. That's it. Whoops. What do we got going on here? So there we go. So... They don't give you instructions, but nobody gives you instructions, but we don't need instructions because I mean it's pretty obvious what's going to go on here. It's quite obvious that the water pump that we got is going to go onto here, the new one they sent us, and this is going to go onto here. Oh, how can I do this? God, I got I to gotta get, get something to hold everything up. That's going to go on there. See that? Pretend the water pump's not going to go on there. And then that's going to go there, which is going to raise this up. So, yeah. Interesting. So you've got gaskets that go here. Like I say, it's bolting to your block, right? Then that goes on there. Then your new water pump goes here. Now it gives you, now this is what I don't like. You know, they should make a variation of these things. 
because right here they've got us so your alternator can sit right here so on this engine your alternator would sit right up on top here well who the hell wants the alternator sitting up there that just looks like shit <clears throat> and they give you a bracket to come off here and that's what them other brackets for they give you this so in case you're running an AC which is a good idea uh, I'm not running any of that so um, for $279, this is an awesome piece. I highly recommend it, except I'm going to cut around, I'm going to cut around $100 of it off. Because I'm going to cut this off. I do not want that. And I'm going to cut this off. Because I'm going to run my alternator off to the side. Actually, I'm not going to run an alternator. I'm going to put a generator on this car. That's what I want to do. One of, those, one of those generators that actually is an alternator. You know what I mean? Or I might even just put a generator on it. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll worry about that when I get there. I do have some good Chevy generators. And I've never had a problem with a generator. I know they're old school, but then when they work, they work damn fine. My 55 Chevy I've owned for almost 20 years has got a generator on it. And I ain't had an issue in the world with it. So, there we go. But we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's that bracket. That's, uh, that's pretty damn cool. That is pretty damn cool because we all know when you put a small block in Model A's, you know, the fan always sits down way lower than it should. So, let's see here. Let's see. No. There. Okay. And. It's going to go right on there. Everything lines up. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, pretty uh pretty simple. So, oh, maybe I'll do a dry run. We'll do a dry run. We got enough time here I can unbolt the fan. I can stick this sucker on. We'll see what it's all about. Let's go for it. Okay, this started mounting this on here. It's just mock up. So, I'm not putting gaskets or anything on it. So, I got the the old water pump off, the fan, the pulley. So as I said, this piece obviously can only go one way, bolts onto where your water pump would go. Now you might be questioning this, you might be thinking, well that piece is going to bring your water pump out even further and screw it up on the pulleys. And that's what I thought too until I talked to my buddy Dan who put it on his model A and he said no, no, because the six cylinder water pump is more shallow. And, he, and you're 100% right, take a look at the two. See the difference in height? I'm not going to get down here for tape measure for you, but your other water pump the difference from this is the difference of that bracket. So everything still stays the same for your pulleys. Everything's exactly the same. So uh, that's a good thing. So I'll bolt this water pump off and we'll get, take a look at it. Okay guys, so here it is. The uh, Zips water pump riser is on my small block. So I was having a little bit of trouble with this. Um, I put it on, of course, this, you can see, this is this old shit I got laying around. Shoved this chrome pulley on here to, you know, get me excited a little bit. Anyway, I was having a little bit of trouble. It was slightly, you can see, look how close that is there. It was slightly rubbing. But uh, it's all good now. Seems to be fine. So that's good. I haven't banged the harmonic balancer on. So if you see, they're not, they're not in line. They're out like by an inch. But that's got to go in an inch. So... I don't want to bang it on. It's got to yank it all apart because the engine has to be built, right? So what's the point? But anyway, there you go. So it lifts it up. If I remember correctly, when I read the thing for this, it lifts it up four and a half inches. So that's going to center it. Now, you know, it puts, your, puts all this out. They give you brackets to go on here for alternator and all that kind of stuff. It's over here. Um, what did I do with it? Here it is. So a bunch of shit right here. I haven't even opened it up because... I'm not going to use any of it. All right, I'm not going to have AC on here. So I'm going to chop this sucker. I'm going to chop this right off. Get rid of that. Chop this ear off here. I don't like that. All right, and this is for an alternator. Right up in there. And, um, yeah, I don't want that either. Like I said. Oil tube, cis clearing if you're on the oil filler. Caps, going to be, if you know, you'd never clear if you're going to run that, but... So I'll get rid of that, but I got lots of room right there. Tons of room. So good, I like that. Uh, very good, very good product. Very happy with that. That's awesome. So we'll see how it works out when the car's up and going. So what I'm going to do one more time here. My headers are on the way too, hopefully soon. Should be here mid-December. 
Um, I'm going to bolt this all in the car. Like, I'm going to put all this back in the car one more time. Make sure and put the rad in everything before I blow this car apart. I want to make sure everything is fitting good in the front. Everything is perfect. I don't want to be playing with this. I don't want to rip it apart, start painting and putting and then go to put it together and something's out of line because I didn't try it. So that's why I'm just taking my time. But we are getting there. So hey, I think that's it for today. One last glance at that dash. There you go. It's looking good. And remember, I couldn't remember I said over there, I just drilled the holes and then they're barrel clips. I was trying to think of the name and I went and dug one out and there you go. That's a barrel clip. And what that does is that pushes into the hole you've drilled in the glove box door and then the emblem has studs on it that'll push into there and that'll hold it tight. Barrel clips. Sometimes it just slips my mind all this shit. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Remember, it was Sunday and it was one hell of a fun day. So I'll see you next week. It's always a good time at old time.